everyone, welcome to Dorset Allergy. I'm Dr Helen. We thought it would be useful for you to see skin prick testing in action um, so that you can see what you might expect if you come to clinic and, um, it, and see what it's like. This is my son Ethan. Um, as you probably know if you've listened to any of my other videos, he's the reason that I um, became interested in allergy and wanted to burden my knowledge. He's going to be my willing victim today. Apologies if he laughs too much, but he's 12 and he's at a slightly awkward stage. So, Ethan, are you ready? Yeah? Okay, so first of all, we're going to pop a pillow under Ethan's arm. And um, Ethan, are you feeling well today? No coughs, colds, bugs? Yes, I am. Mean, okay. okay. And have you had any antihistamines in the last four days? No. No? And have you got any creams or anything on your arms at the moment? Good, so what we're going to test Ethan for is a variety of different, what we call aerophagens. So things that may make him um, have what looks like hay fever symptoms, so sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes. Um, we think that Ethan's already allergic to house dust mite. Um, we know that one from when he was little, but he hasn't had skin prick for quite a long time. So we're gonna recheck that today. So I have little bottles of solution that contain um, different allergens in them, so different things that we're testing to see if people are allergic to. So for Ethan, we're going to have a look at grass pollen, tree pollen, birch pollen, which is a specific type of tree, and weeds. And then we're going to have a look at cat, dog, and dust mite. And then you'll see that we've got two extra bottles here, and those are what we call our controls. So we always want to see whether or not the test is reliable and whether or not it's worked. So we put one drop of, droplet of saline on, which is essentially salty water, which someone shouldn't react to, and another droplet of histamine, which is the chemical that's released in an allergic reaction. So if the test has worked, then somebody should get a raised itchy bump or hive to the histamine at least. And then we're looking to see whether or not he gets any raised bumps to any of the other substances. So I've already laid out what we're gonna test for here. And we have a little skin prick testing chart here, which I can record the values. So, the first thing I'm going to do is just clean my hands. And we have Ethan's arm nice and ready. And thankfully, because he's a bit bigger, he's got lots of space that I can use on his arm. And we use the inner surface of his arm. But it's fine for babies. We may have to limit how much we test for. Or we might do it on two arms, um, if we really had lots of substances to check. Or we might do it over a few days. So what I'm going to do now is write on Ethan's arm. Children like this usually because we normally tell them not to write on their arms. Um, this occasion that we're giving them go ahead. So I'm going to write a little letter to um, remind myself what I'm testing for. And I'll put the droplet next to it. So the first one that we're going to do is a G for grass. And then we're going to do a T for tree pollen. And a B for birch pollen and a W for weed, a C for cat, a D for dog, and then I'm going to come over here, a H for house dust mite, a negative symbol for the saline salty water that he shouldn't react to, and a positive for the histamine that he should, and it's quite veiny but I'm going to try and avoid going over his veins. And he's got a nice long arm so I was able to space all those substances out. These are the solutions that we're going to put droplets on in a minute, but before I do that, I'm going to get my lancets ready to show you what one of these looks like. So we're just going to open all the packets ready. So I'd like to be as prepared as possible so that uh, children don't have to sit here for too long worrying about it, or adults. So this is a lancet. You won't be able to see it. I'll try and come oh, a little bit closer. It's got a tiny sharp prick on the end. You can see he hates them. He's obviously remembered. But actually, the reality is that um, pop in the droplet just feels a bit like you poke yourself with a sharp pencil. So it really doesn't particularly hurt. As if, <laughs> you can tell this is real from Ethan's face, but you'll see in a minute. Does it hurt much? It doesn't hurt much, no. It really doesn't. But sometimes, as you'll see, you know, children are a bit unpredictable and they just get a bit nervous. And particularly toddlers can get a bit nervous if they've had it done before. But if we're struggling here, then we have some nice assistance. He'll be able to pop in and blow some bubbles um, to distract the children. Um, we rely on good parents or caregivers to help hold the children, but they really do tolerate it quite well. And there's my shark spots ready. So first thing I'm going to do is literally just put the water, the droplets on containing the different solution. So Ethan is going to stay nice and still for me 
to wipe these bubbles away. Mm. All the time being careful that we don't mix across the bubbles, that we're not cross-contaminating. So now you can see his arm just has the labels and nothing else at all. And sometimes for some quite reactive people, you will start to see the bumps already, or um, you may well start to feel the skin itching. Yeah, so from this point, we time for 15 minutes. Um, so usually uh, we may have some more discussion that we want to do and children are free to get down and play. We try and encourage them not to itch, so we might just put a jumper or something over the top of it. Um, but the itching sensation doesn't usually last too long. Yeah. So rather than make you sit here and watch us for the whole 15 minutes, we'll come back in 15 minutes and I'll show you what Ethan's arm looks like. 